Photographic memory is a skill that allows the top athletes to look less on the map, more on the terrain, therefore run faster and get better results. Or does it? We are going to find out in this video, so stay with me till the end because there are going to be some interesting information coming right your way. And if this is your first time to the channel, my name is Tom and this is Into the Forest I Go, where we are talking about orienteering, the sport where we run with a map and a compass, and we're having lots of fun along the way. So if you want to explore more, check out all the other videos on the channel, consider sub subscribing, and we are going off with photographic memory today. Some of you have been asking, what is photographic memory? How to develop it to get better at orienteering? Well, the answer might surprise you, because photographic memory is also called eidetic memory, and actually it's something that I'm willing to bet that none of the top orienteering athletes have, right? So this photographic memory, what it allows you to do is it allows you to recall the picture exactly as it was several minutes or some time after you've been exposed to it, you've seen it, okay? Exactly as it was. This is a very rare skill. Some of the children at younger age have it and then they lose it when they grow up. Some of the adults have it as well, but it is really, really rare. So what we are probably thinking when we say photographic memory is not exactly what it is in reality, but rather the easiness for certain people to be able to remember more while running with the map, looking at the map, and then having more time to actually observe the terrain, find the features with more accuracy uh, in the terrain, and therefore be able to have more flow and more speed also in the race. I can promise you that photographic memory is not a holy grail of orienteering. It will not make you an orienteering god. Um, and actually, what it is in reality, it's not even a single skill. It does exist, but I think it's a combination of actually three skills together. The first one is being able to read the map while you're running, right? The map is shaking. Your eyes have to follow the shaky map. And this is a skill that needs to be acquired. And we're all training this while doing orienteering races. We are doing it, right? There's also an opportunity to train this while doing normal races without running in the terrain. Um, but, but of course, some of us probably are doing it. Others are not. And that makes a difference in the end. The second skill that contributes to this photographic memory, now I will have to quote it, I guess, is the ability to focus on memorizing the elements that are actually important. And that, of course, is connected with the third element, which is generalization. Therefore, uh, it means that you, of course, need to properly plan the leg to filter out the elements that you want to discard, like you don't even, you're not even going to be looking for them, and you want to focus on elements that will help you realize the leg in the proper way with minimizing the risk, but also maximizing the speed. You might be wondering now, okay, so if I don't have the photographic memory and I'm never going to acquire it, also I certainly won't, then how do I get better at memorizing what I see on the map, right? What do I do? Well, the answer to this is that, of course, you need to train this. And I will get a little bit later in this video to the training methods that I recommend. But I will mention also over here that it's important to focus on how you're doing it, right? So even if you will be training it, the, um, the, the, the way that you're going to approach this exercise is also important. So when I sat down and I thought, okay, um, what is important when you're looking at the map and trying to memorize, uh, I, I came to four points that I want to share with you over here. The first one is that, of course, you want to memorize the main terrain features by their names. The last part is very important, by their names. Actually, both parts are important, right? So you want to be able to pick the main terrain features, but you also want to memorize their names in your head. So when you're memorizing, this is what children usually do, or beginners that are adults, they do it as well. They are thinking, okay, I will find this, then I will go to this, I will come over here, and then I will be there. 
<laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. You need to name things specifically because then it's easier to visualize it in your head when you think about the name of the feature, of the terrain feature. And also it's easier later on to remember what it actually was. So name the terrain features properly. Say that you're going to pass the hill, you're going to get to the corner of the fence, and then you're going to attack from there in a certain direction to find, let's say, a knoll that you're looking for, right? So be specific. Now, the second element is something that I've already mentioned in this last example. You want to focus on the relative position of those elements to one another, right? So you kind of want to create a map in your head. I'm going from here to here and then to here and I'm home, right? But you need to know that from here to here it's this angle, from here to here it's that angle and then it's that angle, right? So you need to be able to memorize that in certain um, areas you need to adjust your direction. It doesn't have to be like, you know, super specific because, of course, in normal race you're usually not remembering the whole leg from the, from the beginning to an end and you will get more opportunities to look at the map and you will get opportunities to adjust your direction to look at the compass properly, right? But it's still important to remember that from here to here I'm going in, in general, generally in that direction and then the next part of this leg I'm going to have to turn slightly to the right and I will be going generally in that direction, right? And also the, um, the distance between those elements plays a role as well, of course, right? Because when you're running from one element to another and it's 300 meters to run, it makes no sense to slow down after 100 meters and start looking around and, you know, you, you might be getting worried, oh, I, I don't see it. Well, you don't see it because there is still 200 meters to get to it. So um, if you remember the distance, then of course it helps as well. I'm not saying it's easy to remember all of this together, but I'm saying that this is what is necessary if you want to be perfect at it, right? All right, so that's step two. Step three is remember the support feature. So these are lesser elements. Uh, remembering those are, uh, is less important. And again, as I've mentioned, you will probably be looking at the map um, more times during this lag. So it's, it's, it's not crucial to remember those smaller elements, but it's also worth like uh, registering at least in your mind that they might appear somewhere along the way. And then when you bump into them, you might just look at the map. Okay, there, there is a pit. Yeah, there is a pit on my path. So I'm, I'm like reassuring myself that I'm on the right direction. And I also know how much distance I've already covered, which is also a very important information. And then we come to the last element, which is remembering the direction of linear features. So if there are any linear features along the way, it's worth like remembering, storing in your mind somewhere this information, which angle you're going to be tackling them, right? If it's if it's like this and you're coming like this, so it's uh, exactly 90 degrees uh, compared to your direction that you're coming from, it's worth remembering that, right? If it's skewed, it's, it's also, uh, again, helpful to remember more or less how um, you're going to be coming into those linear features so that when you hit them, you know that you are, that first of all, that this is the one, and second of all, that you are going in the right direction. But again, I'm mentioning this at the very end because I think this is the least important out of the four, and checking the map even briefly during the lag will allow you to ascertain yourself that yes, you are here, and yes, this is the element that you have been looking for. And now, learning how to do it is really important to how you learn all the other similar skills in life. And there are plenty of them. I, I could give you tons of examples. Think, for example, uh, let's, let's get a simple one. You're trying to pick a fruit from a basket and there are some good fruits and there are some like mediocre fruits, right? You immediately know which ones to pick. Why? Because you have experience with it and you kind of know already what a good fruit looks like. Let's, let's call them apples, right? You know already how the good apple looks like. You might take it in your hand, just quickly uh, turn around to see if there aren't any bad spots and you got it, right? So you have certain tiny things that you look for and therefore it allows you to make a good decision. Another one that is, I think, a pretty good example is uh, communication between people. And this one comes to my mind because I have been working on communicating skills for a while. And I kind of, it's like, it, it's kind of funny. 
So you, you read about this and when you're reading the book, it absolutely makes sense. And you're thinking, yeah, I should be talking to people like this. But then you start talking to people and after the talk, you think about how it went and you realize that actually you didn't improve at all. Why? Because to actually improve, you need to be focused on some elements that you want to weave into your conversation, which are new. They are new to you, so you're not used to them. So if you just go and talk to someone without being focused on those elements, they will just pass you by, right? You will not use them. You will not incorporate them into your talk. Therefore, again, an important element is that when you're doing something like this, you of course need to think about it. And if you think about it several times while doing certain activity, it might be conversation, it might be something absolutely different, then it will stick. It will stick and after a while you won't have to think about it anymore. It will be natural. Think about when you were learning, maybe not all of you, but some of you already probably have a driving license. Think about it. When you were learning how to drive a car, you had to think about when to press the clutch, how to change the gear, um, how to use the steering wheel, when to turn the blinkers on, when to look into the mirror, when to look at the signs next to the road. So many things to think about when you're driving a car, right? It's astonishing when you think about it that now, uh, after several years of driving, we are doing all of those things automatically and then while doing those things we can have a perfect conversation with the person sitting next to us we can do some dancing we can draw pictures uh, with one hand and the second hand steering the, the wheel with our elbows right of course i'm joking nobody should be doing those things but i'm not joking when i'm saying that driving a car after several years is just seamless you don't think about any of those things, maybe except looking at the, at the signs if you're in a new area, right? So this is exactly what you want to achieve. You want to spend some time focusing on proper map reading and remembering uh, important elements so that later on it becomes a habit and you've trained it. And now you're like professional, like all the others. All you need to add to it is probably 20 other skills and some great running speed and you're there. All right, but let's be serious and let's talk about how to train this. I will give you some examples. I want to start with the ones that are really simple. As always, I'm a simple person. I like solutions that work everywhere. So this one you can do almost during, well, not almost, during every training session with the math that you have. Just challenge yourself to run the leg after looking at the map just once. And you can tell to yourself, okay, I give myself 10 seconds each leg to remember what I need to cross out and then I need to cover the leg and see how it goes, right? And of course, if you fail, you fail, you look at the map again, you finish the leg with two or three uh, looks at the map, but then you try the next one again with just one. And at the end of the race, you might make a score. I, I succeeded five times, I failed four times. It's almost a draw, but actually I won, right? <laughs> or another modification of this is that you might challenge yourself to look at uh, the map only several number of times, right? So instead of doing it just once at the beginning of the leg, you might say that, okay, I'm allowed to look at the map uh, during the leg up to three times, right? It doesn't have to be three, maybe it's a short leg and one is enough, but maybe it's a long leg and you have to look a little bit more often than just once, right? So, you know, pick the number that makes sense in regards to the training that you're running. So, for example, if you're running a sprint training, usually looking once at the map should be enough, right? If it's a forest training, especially if there are longer legs, it might be necessary to look at the map more than once. And it's fine as well, as long as you you feel that it's a challenge and as long as you remember about focusing on those elements that should be important to you, right? And of course, analyze it after the race and make sure that uh, you've actually focused on the right terrain features and you didn't ignore uh, some that were relevant on a certain leg. Now, another thing that you can do, but this will require some preparation actually and you can't do it all the time, but it's, it's a very nice training. I like it maybe because I'm pretty good at this, so maybe it, it gives me a lot of joy, 
but uh, I like the trainings where, or, or, or the, yeah, actually these are always trainings. I've never seen a competition like this. Um, so I, I like training sessions where you're not allowed to take the map with you, right? So you're allowed to look at the map, you're allowed to spend with the map as much time as you want before you leave it, but then you go and search for the control without taking the map with you. If you fail, you have to come back to the same spot, look at the map again, again try to remember and then go and try again, right? So you can do it as a, as a training where you have the map in the middle and then people are going, I'm raising it higher so you can see, people are going in several different directions from this uh, certain, uh, sorry, center point. Um, and you can also do it by placing small pieces of the map at each control so that people run from one control to another, to another, to another, but then every control needs to have this small piece of map with just one leg to the next control, right? So uh, these are the two very simple variations of, uh, of, this, um, of this training, and both of them are a lot of fun. Now, the last one that I want to mention is uh, something that uh, I personally enjoy a lot and I have been doing it for many many years and I think it's very simple to prepare quick right you know you don't you don't need to spend a lot of time on it but at the same time it gives me so much fun and this is like redrawing controls so uh, I, I don't know how to name it properly so that it's easily understandable but let me explain it you basically have the map with controls uh, just circles everywhere on the map, like let's say 30, 40 of them. And then you have a, a sa the same map on blank. And that's it, that's what you need, right? So you can have one of those maps with controls, you, have, you can have several of those blank maps, one for every person that is participating. Um, and then the training is all about going to the map with the controls, remembering where the controls are, and then go running to the map that is empty, that is yours, signed by you, and then from your memory, drawing those controls exactly at the right spots on the clean map. It's a training that is super simple to prepare. Basically, you just pick any map, throw some controls on it. It doesn't matter really where they are exactly on which elements, as long as they are on some elements. You, you just you don't just throw them in, in random places. They have to be like proper pl properly placed for orienteering, um, and and then you print one map. Uh, you take, you print of one map with controls, you print as many maps as needed without the controls, and you lay it down in two corners of the gym, and the fun begins. Now, a twist. A twist is that it really makes sense to tire people out a little bit between those two maps, right? So, what I've been doing for many years when I've been leading uh, the training sessions for smaller children, uh, is that I've been doing a small round of exercises, right? So the maps were actually pretty close to one another, but then you had to run a, 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 around the whole gym, and at certain parts of the gym you, you had certain exercises, very simple ones that you had to do, like um, do, do the roll, for example, do some squats, maybe do a push-up, do some burpees. Uh, like 30, it, it took them like 30 to 40 seconds, but while doing those exercising, exercises, while getting a little bit tired, you start to forget. It's easier to remember when you just look at the map, remember, and you run focused, get to the clean map and start the drawing. It's much harder when you sit at the map with the controls, remember, but then you have to also remember the sequence of exercises that you need to do, which I always mixed and they were not always the same, so people had to focus and remember which exercises are after another. And then, of course, those exercises tire you out a little bit, that causes you to lose focus, and when you get to your map, especially for children, sometimes it was very hard. So I've been talking with them always, and I asked, okay, how many controls did you try to remember? And children were saying, the, the beginners were saying one, right? And they, they were usually successful. But those more advanced ones were saying, for example, three or four. And how many controls were you able to draw after every circle around the gym? Well, two, sometimes one, three was a great success, right? So it does work and it's a great fun. So it's it's something you can do in a group. It's something that is competitive. So it's a lot of fun for every uh, sport person, basically. And also it's something that you can do everywhere. You can do it outside, you can do it inside. We actually have a video 
uh, when uh, we've been doing it at home in our flat apartment. Um, it, I, I did it for my family once and we had some fun with it as well. So it's absolutely doable everywhere. And um, I've even been doing with the national team and we've been doing on our club training camps. So it's a very cool exercise that, again, allows you to focus on remembering things. But I need to mention one thing because you're actually just redrawing the placement of the controls, this exercise um, trains the ability to remember as much as possible from the map, but it does not focus on um, remembering all the necessary elements that are uh, important for the whole leg, right? Because you are just remembering the placement of the control. So it's not exactly ideal, but I still like it. What can I say? All right. And that's everything I have for you today. I hope you've liked it and enjoyed it. If it was fun, hit the like button under the video. It helps the algorithm and then the video can be shown by YouTube to more people. Also, if you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. And if you think that those exercises are fun and you want to comment about something regarding them, just leave the comment or just write anything again for YouTube algorithms to bump the video up. Thank you so much for staying until the very end and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Cheers.